Hey folks, Nathan here from StarWarsReport.com and StarWarsFanWorks.com, where you can find all the podcasts and the Timeline Gold and everything, bringing you another look at a Fantasy Flight Games Star Wars product. This is the beta role-playing book for Star Wars Force and Destiny. We have had up to this point Edge of the Empire, which deals with sort of the fringes of society, Age of Rebellion, that is more of a Rebels vs. Empire type of thing. This is, as one would expect with Force in the title, based around Force users, particularly Jedi, though Dark Side Force users, of course, also will come into play. Again, this is that paperback beta. This is not the final rulebook, and mine, little beat up, uh, bought it prior to when it was released through places like Miniature Market in order to get it very, very early, wound up getting it on eBay, and the person who shipped it had no idea how to ship it without beating the living hell out of it. So... Whatever, but still I think this will work well for a review purpose here. Just don't mind the little bit of damage to the book as we take a look at it. Plays out pretty much like most of the beta books do. You don't really have much in the way of images on the inside except for, you know, a handful as they're introducing sections and whatnot. You got your introduction laying out what's going on in the galaxy. Pretty much the same as we see in the other rule books, particularly the betas that don't go in too much depth relative to the final ones. You got the basic rundown you would expect and how the dice work. That's more or less unchanged as we go between the different RPG books coming from Fantasy Flight Games. We go into character creation. There's some new segments to character creation. We're going to come back to the idea of morality in a moment because that's a big, big thing. But I do want to show you which species come in this. You have details here for Sarians, Humans, Keldor, and Mary Allen which is kind of an interesting selection here, of course, given that we see so many Force users from each of those species. You then also have Nautilans, Togruta, right? Uh, Twi'lek, and Zabrak. I'm kind of squishing it down so you can see that Zabrak there on the end because the natural curve with this being so early in the book makes it kind of hard to spot that image if you're looking through the camera here instead of actually holding it in your hands and reading it. You then have your different choices of specializing. Uh, basically what you can choose is to be a consular. If you're a consular, you can choose healer, you can choose Niman discipline, you can choose sage. As a Jedi guardian or force using guardian, right? you can choose peacekeeper, you can choose protector, you can choose Sorosu Defender. Again, these being specializations within the different types that you can choose from initially. A Mystic, you choose that as your starting point. You can choose the specializations of an Advisor, a Makashi Duelist, or a Seer. Maybe you want to play something more like uh, the Covenant back in KOTOR days. You can choose to be a Seeker, the Ataru Striker, the Hunter, or the Pathfinder. You can choose to be a Sentinel, be an Artisan, a Shadow, ooh, again, kind of delving back into KOTOR era, or a Xi'an Expert. Or you could do sort of the more obvious thing if you're a Force user, which is be a Warrior, where you'd have the choices of Aggressor, Shicho Knight, and kind of a different spin on this, a Starfighter Ace. Uh, I think that works very well if you're trying to play a starfighting group. If you're going to play alongside characters created perhaps within Edge of the Empire or Age of Rebellion. Because the specializations, of course, yeah, they're going to be different, but they play fairly well off of each other. Uh, you go in how you do your experience points and whatnot, all kind of like what you would expect. Skills, of course, are going to go into things that are... Uh, somewhat crossing over with the other games, in some cases not, you know, it's basically tailored to the Force and Destiny concept here. You have talents, right, Force talents and otherwise. You will eventually get to the point where you're into gear and equipment, and it's just like you would expect, lots and lots of gear and equipment here, not a lot of images to go with it, a lot of stuff that's relatively generic. You then get into, after your gear and equipment, I'm trying to do this one-handed here, with 
Conflict and Combat, which is cool. Now, Conflict means something a little bit different here. Um, in this particular chapter, Conflict just means Conflict, but there is a new mechanic built into this game uh, that wasn't in the others called Conflict that we'll deal with it when I uh, zip back to check out Morality here in just a moment. You then also have a section on Starships and Vehicles. You had nice selection here, but not a lot of images, a lot of fairly uh, generic stuff. Uh, I don't mean generic in a bad way. I mean generic in the sense that if you're looking for new expanded universe type information or Legends continuity information, you're not really going to see it here. Then you have The Force, which of course goes into a little more, more depth than what we saw back in the previous betas and such because this is such a big deal in Force and Destiny. You then have different uh, Force Power Trees. We have ones for Bind, we have Enhance, we have Force C. All right, different Force powers here. We have Heal slash Harm, which I thought was a nice way of putting those two together. And we have Influence. We then have Misdirect. We have Move. And yes, I'm going into detail with these in the sense of giving you each one, but I think this is something a lot of folks have been waiting to see. So I want to make sure you get a sense of what is here. You have Protect slash Unleash. You have Seek. You have Sense, going way back into West End Games days there. You have a bit here on the Game Master, of course, right? Who's going to run it and what are some ways to work things into the campaign that'll make it more dynamic and so forth. I mean, it's kind of the same type of thing we just saw in the previous two betas and core rulebooks for Edge of the Empire and Age of Rebellion. Adversaries deal with more force using adversaries in some respects, which is something that you didn't see as much with the other two, but that makes sense. And then you got your exclusive mission, uh, your ex exclusive adventure for this. And I got to be honest with you, when I say generic in referring to those other things, Lost Knowledge here is about as generic as you could possibly get. It's basically, hey, there's some lost possible Jedi information on this planet at this old Sith tomb. What Sith is it? No clues in the image. Looks all creepy, but we will find by the end, oh, it's an unnamed Sith. His name is quote-unquote lost to history. Nice cop out there of saying it's lost to history so that we don't actually ever get to see anything about it. Just, it's really, really kind of lame. Of course, you got your uh, full color, at least, character sheet there in the back, although you're probably just going to want to photocopy it in black and white. Now, the interesting new thing here that I want to get at here for you is this part of character creation that is a little bit different. We're used to the idea of obligation in Edge of the Empire and how that can sort of drive the characters throughout their adventure. And the better you play off of your obligation, the better the rewards are at the end of a session. Same kind of thing with duty in Age of Rebellion. It tends to drive the characters, but it's not so much that it's something that can cause dire consequences per se, it's just, oh, if you didn't play into it well enough, maybe you've got more problems, or maybe you've gotten more obligation. You know, it affects the storytelling, but it's more of a game master mechanic thing than it is something that the character has to deeply, deeply worry about on a daily basis. Not so much with morality. When you play a Force and Destiny character, you must determine your morality. And rather than being something where it's simply a one-shot deal, where it's one part of a description, it brings along two elements to it. An emotional strength and an emotional weakness. For instance, if your strength is bravery, your emotional weakness is anger or justice and cruelty or discipline and obstinateness. I just wanted to point out that they actually use the word obstinateness, which I'm sure a lot of people are going to have trouble figuring out how to say. Um, the idea here is that as you play, the morality comes into play very much like obligation and duty would. But you not only get rewarded for its use, it plays more into things than that because you start out with a morality value of 50. Okay? As you play, you sometimes wind up dealing with conflict throughout play. Uh, when dark side results, or so, yeah, using dark side results to generate force points when activating a force power or force talent to perform certain narrative actions or generating certain results when failing a fear check you get conflict. And at the end of the session, excuse the shaking here because I'm having trouble holding this 
steady as I'm trying to turn the page with just the one hand here. That affects, at the end, what your morality rating is. So, for example, at the end of a game session, Sarah tallies up her conflict and discovers that her character has earned three. She rolls one d10 and gets a one. Her character's morality is reduced by two. If she has in, had instead rolled a six, her morality would have increased by three. It's basically you roll a dice, you make some comparisons there, and the end result is that your morality either goes up or down. If your morality drops below a 30, you become a dark side force user. And there are specific effects that come with that. Uh, the character generates force points, that is the uh, light, dark, using dark side results. The character's presence in the group alters a starting destiny pool. The character's strain threshold may decrease and so forth. Um, Allegiance also reduces the force user strain threshold, as it mentions, uh, and goes into some details here. The opposite would be if you do these really great things and your conflict is always resulting in something positive for you, you could eventually go above a 70 and become a light side paragon. As long as this morality score is above 80, the light side force user strain threshold is increased by 1. As long as the morality score is above 90, the light side force user strain threshold is increased by 1 additional point to a total of 2, and so forth. Um, and there's a whole concept here about redemption from the dark side, uh, which is a new uh, mechanical concept, which of course goes along with the storytelling done by the game master. I gotta say... Obligation and duty were cool concepts when they were introduced, and I love the way that the dice pool affects storytelling. But this morality thing takes this to a whole nother level of awesomeness. Um, I think now that we've got the morality threshold here in Force and Destiny, if it wasn't possible for some to say before that Fantasy Flight Games' and Star Wars RPGs are the most dynamic that we've gotten in many, many years for Star Wars, if not ever... This versatility with the morality threshold for storytelling, I think, finally puts the nail in the coffin of those arguing against that. It's, it really is an awesome sounding mechanic, and I can't wait to see it more in action as we get more of the Force and Destiny materials. So, this particular beta, depending on where you find it, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, you can find it for much more on eBay. It really just kind of depends where you're looking. Bear in mind that, like the others, this will eventually be out of print and hard to find because Force and Destiny will get a real core rulebook for a ridiculous price tag in the near future. So if you want to pick it up, pick up the beta now. Just don't expect really a, depth, a deep adventure. Don't expect the adventure to add anything much to the expanded universe or Legends continuity. Don't expect anything really from this book to add much to the Legends continuity. But if you want to try out or get a real sense for this whole morality thing, definitely check it out. I would dare say that if you're wanting to play a Force user, don't bother trying to create one with the other two books yet. Either get the beta of this and get going with it, or wait for the core rulebook of Force and Destiny, because the options and the morality concept are just that good relative to what we've seen before. With that, we'll wrap up this review. Thank you for watching.